Is enlightenment a myth? Enlightenment is a word, and that word will mean different things to different people. Confucius said that a lot of our problems come about because we don't zheng ming. Zheng ming in Chinese means clarify what we're talking about, <laughs> have the words match what we think, the name matches the reality we're talking about. So enlightenment's just a word in English, it's going to mean different things to different teachers. As I would tend to use the word, the perhaps easiest way to understand enlightenment, you can understand it by uh, understanding what non-enlightenment is. And then we're going to say that enlightenment is freedom from non-enlightenment. So most people have an experience of mind, we think, and although they may not be specifically aware of it, that thinking process occurs in two modalities, mental image and mental talk, and they, those interact. So we have an experience of thought or mind. We also have an experience of body. Some body sensations are emotional, those are very close to us. Other body sensations are physical, but we still say, my body. So a broken leg is my body. Sensations associated with a broken heart are a little bit more my body. They're a little bit closer to my identity. So broadly, we have mental image, mental talk, physical body sensations, and emotional body sensations. As soon as those arise, for most people, there's an immediate imprisonment within them. I am these thoughts. <laughs> I am constrained to believe these thoughts. I am this physicality. I am this carnality. And I am the emotional sensations that are triggered by those thoughts and that trigger those thoughts. To wit, anger, fear, sadness, embarrassment, impatience, disgust, interest, joy, love, gratitude, humorous smile. There's the emotional body. So as soon as mental image, mental talk, physical or emotional sensations arise, they become a, like a gravitational field that simply traps your identity and causes a fundamental sense of separation and alienation, and also uh, causes a profound and pervasive vulnerability, an eternal subtle fear that pervades the human experience. Now, that's what I mean by being imprisoned in the mind and body, that's non-enlightenment. So that going away, that quality of, uh, that as soon as thought and physical and emotional arise in my body, this is what I am and this is all that I am and I'm vulnerable and fundamentally disconnected. The disappearance of that, or the seeing that that was an illusion, depending on how you want to talk about it, either seeing that that was illusory or that going away for some reason, th that would be the disappearance of non-enlightenment. So enlightenment is simply the disappearance of non-enlightenment. And it may happen quickly, suddenly, and when that happens, and we do see that, the sudden versions of this, that's very cool. But in my experience, most people that come to that come to it more gradually. It just sort of sneaks up on them. It has to be, by my criteria, a permanent change. In other words, a peak experience where you sort of get a peak of this that then goes away, that doesn't count as enlightenment. It's permanent. There's no going back, although there is going forward from it. Peak experiences don't count, but whether it happens suddenly or whether it happens gradually, that breaking of, breaking through, breaking out of the prison of separation and, and fear, that's enlightenment. Or rather that is the liberation aspect of enlightenment. Then there's what you do with that in terms of how 
You use it to refine yourself as a human being because it gives you a place to stand. It gives you an enormous potential to refine your humanity. And it gives you a proclivity to be a better person and to be a person who wants to serve. So it gives you an ability and a proclivity to be a, a good person and to be fulfilled from service. However, unfortunately, it does not guarantee that you will become a good person. And it doesn't guarantee that you'll make positive behavior changes or be called to a life of service. It merely gives you a proclivity, it meaning this liberation or aspect of enlightenment, yeah. merely gives you a proclivity and an ability, a new ability to make those improvements. You have to actually go out and use that ability. Otherwise, it's, it's a smaller version of enlightenment. It's not classic enlightenment. Mm -hmm.